Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go through Databricks, right? Recently in Databricks Day, Data Plus AI Summit, Databricks introduced Databricks Free Edition, right? Just to just to give you what it is all about, I did a Google search and it says Databricks Free Edition is a no cost version of Databricks designed for students, educators and hobby students to learn and experiment with data and AI. What I tried to do is I went through my 30 days of playlist which I had already created one year before. I see many people are finding it helpful, but some of the things are kind of outdated. So what I thought is now as we have this Databricks free edition introduced, I will take this time to create more videos related to Databricks so you get to know what is all about the Databricks and so on. This will be the first video in the series of videos you will be seeing in the future. In this video, I will show you the different approaches or different ways how you can access Databricks and what is the limitations of the free edition also because there are some limitations there. And we'll go through the UI part only, how you can go into the free edition. The next video will be exploring the UI and, and so on because I don't want to cover everything in one video. Let's get started. Before getting started, if you are completely new to Databricks, you might be wondering what is even Databricks, right? If you want, you can go to my video here in the previous playlist, what is Databricks all about? Or you can just do a normal Google search about Databricks, right? So as I said, you Databricks free edition, but you can just type Databricks. It says your data, your AI, your future. If you scroll down, you can see it is a data intelligence platform. Explore demos, why Databricks and so on. To give you a high level understanding, it's one place where you can have your data you can have business analysts, data analysts, data scientists, machine learning engineer, AI engineers, and all people just coming into that one unified platform and create value out of that particular data because it's the data that creates value, right? So there are many things just to go through what is Databricks. But as we go through, you can see what are the different pieces of Databricks. That's how I want to approach instead of just saying what is Databricks. You can do the, those things with, with a normal Google search or you can watch this video or there are multiple videos in the internet that you can just go and watch, right? So now I just had this one simple diagram just for you to know how you can assess Databricks. Right. This is the logo of Databricks and there are different ways how you can assess Databricks. Now we have this free edition. Let's go that later. But first we had this free trial and then there is community edition. So before there was community edition and now the community edition is replaced by free edition. So you cannot use the community edition, but if you have been using already, then you can still use it. As it says here, the Databricks free edition is, we recommend signing this. You can use either legacy community edition or go for the free edition. I will be using the free edition. You can also follow along with me. You need to first go through the community edition and know what is included in the community edition. Not all things are in the free edition, but we can explore many things out of it. And then what I did in my previous playlist is also first I went through the community edition and then we went on creating the free trial where you have certain amount of days where you can explore all the aspects of Databricks. If you go to these 30 days of Databricks series, you can see here I have notebook numbering there. And I think at some point I said free edition and upgrade from Databricks community. So you can say 17 videos were in the community edition and then we jumped into the free trial. In this case, we are not going to do that. We'll be going directly into the free edition. So this is how you can access Databricks in a nutshell. Let me go to this Databricks documentation. I'll provide you the links in the description of the video, but that's not a big deal. So here, if we go to the docs.databricks.com, I just want to now go into the sign up for Databricks option. So now you can see there was free trial, express setup. You can just follow this if you want. And there is this free trial existing AWS account. And you might be thinking, why AWS? Because I don't find many people explaining this also. So I want you to know that Databricks is there in a UI and all the functionalities are there, right? But under the hood, you can see there is AWS, Azure, GCP, SAP, and so on. This is AWS because I am selecting here AWS by default. But if you click 
here you can go to different languages that's the different thing but here if you go to azure now you can see start azure i think it's uh, in different page now so if i go here okay start an azure databricks free trial so you can see there was something also here and if i go gcp what happens the link has been changed sim so but you can still uh, go through because it's navigating you, you to different sources anyway right but let's go to aws so it's here and as we said i think you need to be on the first page if i go here and if i go to gcp okay it works and now i can go inside here sign up databricks free okay that is how the navigation works fine but i want to go to the aws side so these two i'm not going to cover this is the free edition what is databricks free edition let's go a little bit into this and also know the limitations of it because not everything is being covered in the free edition it does not make sense right if you have a business model where you can say use databricks for free why should people have the paid version of it it's for you to get onboarded and once you get onboarded you don't want to leave databricks and then you need to purchase the things from there that's the business objectives so yeah now it says okay this page describes how to sign up for databricks free edition so sign up process and so on we it's just one click uh, things for now but here you can see the databricks free edition is a no cost version of databricks designed for students educators hobbyists and anyone interested in learning or experimenting with data and ai the free edition gives you an easy to use databricks org space where you can explore data sets build and share projects and work with ai and machine learning tools it's ideal for learning prototyping and collaborative exploration this is the main part what can you do right you can build applications and agents you can collaborate on data science and ml projects you can explore and analyze the real data sets you can use sql editor all those things as i said you i'll be covering in the series of videos so it will be there don't worry about that create interactive dashboards design and test the data pipelines assess the databricks assistant right that's kind of a assistant sitting right next to each and every part of databricks to help get started faster and here is the link to the sign up and so on let's go into the limitations right you can go either from here or from here same link this is really important because i just want to cover this before going into the series so you first know what it is right so databricks free edition is a no cost offering and does not include the guaranteed reliability support or service level agreements free edition accounts include many of the latest databricks releases but some features may be limited or unavailable right if you would like to access the full databricks platform you must create a new databricks account by going to free trial because free trial you get some some days which has the same functionality of the paid version so you can go to this route but as now the free edition has many of the things i'm going to follow the free trial for this particular series so yeah this this these things and compute limitations also all purpose compute resource limited to small cluster sizes so these small things are here and i think the thing is no gpu in points these are some of the things that you need to be also taking care about and there are limits on the number of active in points right but one databricks per account so you can create apps inside databricks we'll do that later at some point of the video and you can see there is vector sorts in in points also but you can create only one so you need to delete once you create it if you want to experiment with the others right anyone will do that because you don't want to allow all the things and here a uh, full list of things this is a different link here but unsupported features i just want to cover it now because once we create the video you might be asking okay why there is no r why there is no scala and so on and these also i'll cover later because there are different languages that uh, you can access from one single workspace that's the beauty of databricks sql python r scala i think java something we can we can go through the ui and see but you can see the following features are not supported custom workspace storage locations is not supported online table is not supported clean rooms is not supported ai builder and all legacy databricks features are not supported and here are some of the administrative limitations also you can just go here and look one workspace that's good workspace admins can use okay authentication is limited to email otp sign up sign in with 
Google and sign in with Microsoft. So there is no SSO. This is also really important because they want us to, or Databricks wants us to easily access the workspace with just sign up. That's it, right? And additional limitations. Databricks may delete the free edition accounts that are inactive for a prolonged period. That makes sense because they are providing you free because you can explore. But if you just open the account, do, do not use it, then why should there be some cluster running or allocated for that resources, right? That makes kind of sense. But you need to be knowing this because you created the account, you come after some time and there is no account. It's gone, right? And the free edition are not covered by the Databricks support policy and service level agreements. Makes sense right and free edition accounts may not be used for commercial purposes that's the really important thing that you need to be taking care of because it's just for getting started into Databricks and if you have a company registered if you want to use for commercial things then this is not allowed or may not be used you can see there is the may word here but you get the point you are the right owner to do what you want to do but yeah, this is what it is covered. Now, I just covered what it is, what is Databricks, what are the different ways, how we can do. Let's just do the recap first. What is Databricks? We went through this page and then we went through this one, different ways of doing through it. And then we went through, I think, Databricks free edition. Yes, and different ways. Yeah, that's what I want to cover in this initial phase. But I'll show you how you can easily sign up and I will end the video right there. But in the future, I will walk you through the UI and so on. So it's easier for you to get started and learn things here. For that, what we can do, if you go up, here is this free Databricks account. We don't want to go to the free trial. We go to the free edition. I hope there is somewhere the link. Here it says to sign up Databricks free edition, visit Databricks free edition sign up page. I'll provide that particular link in the description, but this documentation will be there. And I highly recommend you to read uh, the documentations, official documentations, because there is where all the latest things will be. Why I'm saying this is because I will be creating this video and today is 15th June 2025. And I might be saying something because in the field of AI, you are saying something today. And all of a sudden something new appears maybe next day or even same day at some point. And I can see in the comment section that, okay, this is outdated because I cannot go and create each and every videos which I created in the past because I don't have time to create one video now and another video of the same topic soon. Let's say in one day or one month, it's not feasible. This is the link. I will go to the link here. You can see it takes us to the sign up page. Easy sign up. You can just go here. Continue with Google, continue with Microsoft. I have already continued there, but you can click this one. I will say continue with Google for now. And I want to use some LLM Exploring one. That's it. We are inside. It's suggesting my LLM Exploring things here. I can say continue and here is the region and so on. But I'm not going to do this because I have already done it. I will sign in. You get the point. This is how you get into the workspace. I will end the video now, but in the next video, we will be exploring the UI first. What are the different parts for different roles, as I mentioned before, also for data analyst, machine learning engineer, AI engineer, which parts might be the best and some of the settings in the Databricks workspace itself. That's all for this video. If you have any questions or if you want me to create some videos, if you have some topics for me to cover in this series, let me know in the comment section. If not, then thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, do so. It helps motivate me create similar kind of contents in the future. Yeah, if you have already subscribed, thank you again and see you in the next video.